Hey there, Foxy Gamers! Welcome to 10 Helpful Tips for Designing Realistic Roller Coasters in Planet Coaster. This video is assuming you already have a basic understanding of how to make a custom coaster. First of all, and I cannot stress this enough, is do not be afraid of emulating a real-life roller coaster. In fact, I recommend it, as the best way to learn something is by studying reality. This video is a time-lapse of me trying to recreate the coaster Gatekeeper in Cedar Point, although later on I realized I was using the wrong coaster type. There are pretty much POV videos of every coaster out there, and along with Wikipedia stats on heights and speeds, plus various perspective photos from doing a Google search, you can find what you need to get started. The most important part about building coasters is understanding the effects of gravitational force. The vertical G is the force that pushes people down into their seats. You can have around four to four and a half vertical Gs before your roller coaster starts getting too intense. Lateral G is the force that throws people into the side of their train cars. This is much less comfortable and you should try to keep it under two. So how do you maintain reasonable G-force? Vertical Gs are much easier. You simply don't want to have a drastic change in up and down at very high speeds, around 70 miles per hour. Any higher than that and it's best to allow the track to go flat for a short distance first. For lateral Gs, the most important factor is the banking and degree of turn. When making turns at high speeds, if you bank the track in the direction that the train is turning, this will push people down into their seats more than throwing them to the side. The tighter the turn, the higher the lateral g-force will be as well. The goal here is to try and create as smooth a ride as possible. If you're creating a roller coaster that doesn't have bankable turns, such as the spinning coaster, you simply don't allow as high of speeds. Airtime is another important factor for building an exciting and fun roller coaster. The best way to achieve this is by having multiple points on your coaster where the train slows down due to a hill or loop and then speeds back up again. This causes the negative and positive vertical G's to cancel each other out to zero, giving the feeling of weightlessness. You know, that fun topsy-turvy feeling in your stomach. While airtime is great, try not to build too many loops or inversions in a row, otherwise your coaster will have a very high nausea rating any more than three and you'll be guaranteed to having to hire more janitors to patrol the area. Multiple hills in a row, however, on a straight section of track will not make your guests nauseous. When building a custom coaster, it's a good idea to have it constantly testing unless you need to keep your game paused. That way you can periodically check your heat maps to see if a section is in desperate need of a change and your train never comes to a complete stop. In Roller Coaster Tycoon games, a train crashing would result in guests not wanting to ride your coaster due to it being deemed as dangerous, but that isn't the case in Planet Coaster. A good rule of thumb while designing is to make the peak of each loop or hill around 2-3 to three meters lower than the previous one. This will help to maximize the airtime and also make sure your train maintains a decent speed. Depending on the type of coaster you are building, you may have the option to build a second chain lift, booster, or brakes to help modify the speed. The smooth all and smooth banking buttons can be extremely useful for polishing up your coaster when you're done with it. However, this tool is somewhat limited, and if you aren't careful in how you lay down your track as you go, the smoothing will only do so much. Try to pay attention to banking and turns as you're building, and constantly using the smooth tool as you go. The button with the measuring icon allows you to change the length of each piece of your track. I highly recommend building in small pieces. While this causes you to have to lay down more sections, it will warrant better results when you use the smooth tool without destroying your track and also allows you to make more fine-tuned adjustments when you're done. Finally, the best way to see how your coaster is doing is by riding it. You can pretty much diagnose any problem with the available heat maps, but that's not near as fun. So there you have it. I hope these 10 tips send you on your way to becoming a pro roller coaster designer. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you found this video useful and want to see more like it. Until next time, stay foxy everyone!